Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chat Channel. My name is Tim Hayden, and I'll be your host. We have a super show for you today. We'll be talking about the new dark comedy digital series called Kombucha Cure, which can be found on Popstar TV. Written by Cecilia Choi and Michael R. Snell, with the inspiration from their respective careers in medicine. Kombucha Cure is set in a fictional town of Verdigree Lake, where doctors and their cancer patients have taken on the healthcare insurance industry in the spirit of Robin Hood. Two-time Emmy winner Tara Braun from Days of Our Lives and General Hospital, Denise Boot from Young and Restless and Bronx SIU, Jasper Coe from The Fall and McGruber, multiple Emmy nominee Jennifer Bassey from All My Children, Robert Craighead from Ruthless, Angie Kim from Extracurricular, York G. Fryer from Extinct, and Jer Jarmel Nakia from This Is Us, all star in the season this season one comedy series. Kombucha Kerr season one is executive produced by Choi Snell, Jonathan Chia, and Tanya Taryn Raj with York G. Fryer and Jasper Coe as co-executive producers. And you can stream season one on Popstar. I have the stars and co-producers of the show here today. Please welcome Jennifer Bassey, Get it up here. <laughs> Jennifer Bassey, York G. Fry, Fryer, and Jasper Cole. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Hello, Jasper. Hi, Tim. How are you? Doing great. It's almost um, degrees in New York today. Really? Wow, that's great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, can, I guess we'll just start off. Can uh, Jasper, I guess, tell us, start off, tell us a little bit about the show. I've watched it. I'm kind of, except for season, episode six, I haven't got that because it airs today. <laughs> yeah, the finale airs uh, today on Popstar TV. Well, Kombucha Cure, the series, um, it's really about this little town, uh, Lake Verdigree, and it's sort of a town of quirky characters that have sort of come up with a way and th what they think is a way to sort of outwit, outrun, outdo big pharma and insurance companies um, by coming up with their own medicinal uh, holistic treatments and we're not going to say uh, they didn't. They didn't do anything illegal, but they found some interesting ways around. <laughs> There's always a loophole. There's it's always hard, a loophole. It, it's hard to say too much, right, guys? Without giving away. Um, there's a very Robin Hood esque quality to the the show. I play Theo, who's a very quirky um, army veteran. He and his wife live in town. We have a pet pig, and and um, York. You can tell everyone about. About Dr. Gee. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh hey Tim. I uh play Dr. Uh, uh Dr. Gee or Dr. Guy, depending on um who you're asking in the show, because you'll hear it, you'll hear it both ways. Uh uh who is a doctor in the town that is trying to just take care of all these patients. It's a very, very, very poor town. And you know, I'm an oncologist who doesn't have much money or resources to to take care of all these people. So kind of like Jasper said, you know, uh, bending the rules a bit to take care of these people. But in that, it's like, the, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bending of the rules for love because right. I care so much about these people that, you know, I can't let them go down the drain, so to speak, even though they may be poor. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, my my attempt personally to try to help these uh this town and i love all the characters but i gotta ask jennifer we got to ask, talk about your character which is so loved i mean you can't not love your character <laughs> oh my character well first of all I, I i loved doing the hungarian accent number one because when i got the audition um i i called up jasper i said jasper um she was raised by Hungarian immigrants. So I think she would have an Hungarian accent. And so I went, I found a, a guy that teaches Hungarian accents and um, I had such a wonderful time. I mean, I, I took certain vowels, you know, like mm -hmm. lot 
instead of lot and uh, company instead of company and vise otherwise, you know, just like four, you know, and she is so vulnerable because her, her husband, she and her husband have been getting illegal medication uh, throughout from Europe I think, isn't it, Jasper, from Europe? The, the, because, mm -hmm. yeah. because the insulin came from Germany. She can't afford um, uh, the medications, you know. Just the insulin came from Germany. I remember. I wa I just watched yeah. it. So right. Tim, Tim knows more about this show than we do. So our <laughs> medication we'll just ask, and, we'll just and, and, <laughs> and they sent me phony medications. So I'm. It's killing me. You know, and I'm dying because I can't afford because of big pharma and whatever. My meds are off the charts and we are very poor and we can't afford, you know. And who doesn't like to almost die because it's already aired? You know, I mean, almost dying is as fun as dying, practically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on camera, yeah. on camera. On be. camera. On camera. And then coming back, at, well, I was a twin to start out with. And so, but the twin only did like one little scene. So, but... It was wonderful. And Robert Craig had who couldn't come today. Wonderful actor. Wonderful, really funny. And and everybody on the shoot was terrific. We all got along. We had a wonderful time. And it was just like a thing of love. Okay, it's an independent film. It's an important message. That's what I thought felt more about the message that it sends out, because I think we're living in a country. You know, you look at all the documentaries that have been made by, you know, uh, Oxycontin and all the other things, and you, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's terrifying. It's terrifying, mm -hmm. and the people, you know, for a nickel in Cuba. Remember mm -hmm. that Robert, Roger, Roger, um, Roger, uh, Roger, and, and you're a Caesar citizen, right. darling. I know, and I'm right there behind you, but yeah. Names go. Roger Moore. Roger. Roger Moore. Listen, he made the same one in Cuba where the, the people that were dying here because they're medicin right. $300, it was a nickel in Cuba. Yeah. The same medication. Mm -hmm. Cuba, Cuba has a wonderful medical system aside from all the bad <laughs> stuff that goes on there. But, you know, if you survive living there, you'll you'll have good medical care, I guess. But anyway, yeah, so it's it, it was it was a wonderful experience. And, and what I'm what I think Jasper and all of us are so happy about is that uh, it's resonating with people. And our director being a doctor and, and yes. being Korean, which is like very in at the moment as well and very talented, um, you know, took this because she was seeing from the other side what was happening. To yeah. people. Yes. And, and I, I loved that that she took that because a lot of doctors wouldn't. They'd be afraid of their career. They oh yeah. That before the the patient. Listen, I'd be afraid for my life. Yeah. You true. know, it's it almost like a, 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 a you know a medical mafia where they all get together and say we're all going to charge four hundred dollars for one pill or something. I don't know who made all this up, but anyway, I'm yeah, not they're not called big pharma for no reason. So that may be why that made their they're coding. <laughs> yeah. I, I met a lady yesterday who the opening scene of episode one where Dr. Cohen is basically on the phone rejecting. Uh, well, I met this lady yesterday and that's what she used to do for, we can't say the company, but you know, red, right. red square instead of red circle, we'll call it. Um, but she used, that was her job all day long was to deny, deny, Claims and so she, she kind of was just going to look at the first part of the show to see if she liked it, and that hooked her in right away. And then she told me, it just you know it was dead on. Unfortunately, it hasn't gotten any better today. You know, if you think about it, that'd be one job I don't think I would want because I don't know if I could sleep at night knowing that mm -hmm. I could possibly have been responsible for somebody's life. Yeah. Well, That's I'll tell you, I did some comedy to it, so. <laughs> yes, but you make it a point though. That's the best way to make a point. Right. Is to make an impact, and an impact is comedy. Everybody needs laughter. I, I did a little research, and I'm sure y'all aren't. I didn't know the answers to this, but uh, do you know what the healthiest city in the U.S. is? The, do you the know health, what the healthiest? the healthiest city in the United States? Healthiest. Wow. Mm -hmm. I say no. that because the little town was. 
had to be the insurance company declared them as the healthiest town. That's the reason why I looked that up. Oh, the insurance companies decided. Who's, yes. Okay. Well, you for you for the show, but not not this. This is serious. Where I just looked it up and double checked it. Which state? Yeah, I have no idea. I know Which I don't state? know. It's in California. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Sacramento or mm -mm. San Diego? San Francisco. Oh, really? the healthiest. Okay. It says that they spend the third highest amount on fitness, beauty, and health, averaging about $331 a month. I was shocked. I was kind of surprised. Well, that's good to know. I love San Francisco. Well, a bigger surprise was Kentucky, where I am, is one of the uh, top cancer states. Oh, wow. Lung yeah. cancer. Lung cancer. Are, but of course, we're, tobacco, we're a tobacco state. We're not so much now, but. Yeah. Or well, have been, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. in Lake Verdigree, there's a copper mine. There's a There's been a copper mine in mm -hmm. near Lake Verdigree, and there's been the runoff for years that mm -hmm. could be why there's been a high rate of cancer. In in the show in the town in the town that we live in, uh, York. Did you have someone in mind when you were developing your character? Or because I know each one of you got the opportunity to develop. I mean, you get points, but you get to kind of develop that person that you are. Oh, that's so interesting question. No, I can't say that I had uh, a person yeah in mind um, as I did it. Though I did do like a good amount of like research and you know you can there's like a slight french canadian accent that's in there as well uh that some people get and some people don't hear and then some people are like no i totally heard it so that's in there um but yeah i didn't necessarily take a, a person that i knew that existed and and and, and model uh guy uh after that for me it was really more of just kind of taking um the circumstances and then kind of filling out the character from there, like just, you know, knowing about my time in the military and like trying to understand that and what that would be and how I ended up in this little town and then making the decisions to stay here and try to help these people out. And back to your accent, if everybody listened to the show, they would have picked up on it because they, uh, I think it's uh, Jennifer's husband keeps referring to you as the foreigners. The foreign doctor. He does, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Those foreign <Whoa>. docs. <laughs> That's yes. right. So if they That's listened correct. to that, they would have caught your accent because I did catch your accent. Well, actually, Theo and my wife Erin and and York's character knew each other uh, back from the military well, time in the during military together. The great well, thing what, about doing uh, a season two, we we'll get to explore a lot more of these relationships. Well, I've got to say, Jasper, um, I follow you. I've seen, I won't say everything, but I've seen a lot of your work. And generally, they always make you the bad guy or the bad boy. <laughs> yeah, they I'm do. so thrilled that you got to, you weren't typecast that in this role. I mean, you were, to tell you the truth, not that you're a pothead, but you put me in mind of like the Cheech and Chong type of person, you know, all chilled <laughs> out, just friendly with everybody. You got the pig. Didn't you, you, love, know. Didn't you love his pig? Yes, oh, yeah. the pig I, is the, I mean, I we were all over that little pig. I mean, <laughs> I was fixing to say the pig that poor pig had have its intestines removed. <laughs> so, Tim, you should you should know that, like, when we were casting, you know, we, we definitely did not have Jasper's type in mind for no, Theo. Did not. <laughs> and so, but you know, he came in the room and was so good, like, you know, just what he was presenting was so good, and it was just such a different take on what we had thought about the character and we just kind of like we I mean, we all talked about it and kind of like fell in love like dude this guy is like really fun and really entertaining and like what if Theo was different than what we were thinking and and then we were like now we can't even think of Theo any other way like you know because he fit it but he just fit it in such a a different way than actually we had even anticipated which was really cool well and thank you can't you. even imagine not having a Theo character I mean because, I mean, you can't. You just fall in love with you because the pig and you and your wife and y'all are both just so I, chill. <laughs> I'm so grateful that, to your point, I listen, I love, you know, I love being typecast that way. But if you know me, my real personality and stuff, Theo's, ah. a, lot, 
I mean, Theo's a lot closer to Jasper, you know, than the other stuff I played before. So I'm so grateful we get to play a lighter comedic role. I'm glad you said that. that was going to be my next question for all of you is how unlike you were with are with your character. Well, like I said, I mean, I'd like to, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, bless his heart. I mean, the, <laughs> Theo, I'm sure, but you know, in my mind, Theo is a really smart guy to have accomplished the stuff he's done. But um, he's simple, right? In a good way, but probably would give you the shirt off his back and would be the first one to show up if you needed something. So in that respect, we're nothing. Jennifer? No, I'm kidding. Well, I am totally like her. I mean, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I think she's like the salt of the earth, she and her husband. They're good people. Mm -hmm. They're not stupid, but they're good. Pe they're just good people, and and uh, and they're getting screwed with their health stuff. And I mean, you had to be a good person. You helped raise four boys that weren't even yours. I think it was four: the sheriff, the two doc three doctors. Yeah. Oh, that I was standing up for everybody. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. I'm sticking up for the, the the other people in town. Oh yeah, no, she's a she's she's a good. I mean, not that I'm not a good person, but I'm kind of you. I play, you know, I played a nymphomaniac alcoholic for forty years on all my children. Now that's the, closer to you, Jen. That's closer. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta admit, I love Marion. Thank you, and I love her. love talking in dirty one liners, just like you know, <laughs> Mae West. She said, "Honey, it's it's not the men in my life; it's the life in my men." <laughs> No, yes, but to think you ended up with Ada, I mean, uh, uh, Stuart, that, you know, you don't see Stuart as a sex maniac. <laughs> I what? I what? Say that again. I said you ended up with Stuart and you don't see Stuart as a sex maniac or anything. Well, but Stuart, <laughs> Stuart, this is what Adam said. He said, Adam got the brains and Stuart got the goods. Oh, and there you go. The goods. Yes, <laughs> Mary yes. was very happy with Stuart, right. Right. Well, you also slept with your son-in-law, right? I slept with everybody, darling. Good for you, darling. <laughs> I slept with yes. all my daughter's husbands. She As it should be. Yeah. I made a pass. Now, this is disgusting. This even <laughs> disgusted me. I said, oh, I can't. They said, you're going to do that. I, I made a pass at a doctor over the coffin of my husband who just died. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, hi, darling. Why don't we have lunch soon? <laughs> Over the coffin of my dead husband. I mean, and then you went back to fake crying over your. That's husband. not a class act, woman. You no. know, no. But this, but she, yes. And I love doing. She's a character. I love doing characters. You know, and um, and Hannah is a character. She's a very sweet, sweet lady, and she's a victim of what she's going through and can't afford to get better and can't afford to get the medication to get better. So, in some ways, I think the Milwaukee's really are. The, the a lot of the people in the audience that we're talking to people that are going through this right now with the healthcare system i mean a lot of other people are but for, i think the Milwaukee's really sort of represent that part of the country that they do really having to do much worse than there are people doing much worse than they had to do just to get their insulin and stuff so i have to get cecilia you know props off to her because she really it can tell a poignant story with humor and um, that's not easy to do. Well, I mean, and the fact that she used a small town instead of a city. I mean, yeah. Because, you know, that's where it hits you the most. That's where most people are. I'm not saying the city isn't affected, but the people in the country are kind of forgotten sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sure. That they, they are. The flyover states, as they call it, you know. York, are you anything like your character, or did you incorporate your character, part of you in the character? Oh, Tim, man, I was totally typecast. So Cecilia, <laughs> so I would say yes, I, I, I am in a lot, not always. Clearly, I'm not an oncologist <laughs> or anything like that. But, not yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so I definitely am a lot like doctor guy as a matter of fact um the first time we did a table read Cecilia actually brought up the idea of me playing 
Guillaume. Um, and we had worked together on some other stuff. So, so she was very, very familiar with me and the kind of actor that I am and the person that I am. So she was just like, York, I just feel like you would fit perfectly into this role. But, you know, we didn't know that I was going to do it at first. You don't ever know, like, you know, as a producer, if you're going to play a role or if all of a sudden, you know, some actor whose resume is way better than yours and adds money and value it helps it sell comes and then all of a sudden you've got to get up a role that you'd really love to play but yeah i would say i was i'm very like uh dr guy and just a lot of the ways that you know at least i i would say i try to be because he is a pretty fantastic human being who really is putting himself at risk um of maybe even going to jail but it's worth it for him to help the people in this small town. So, so yeah, I, I, I should say I should at least strive to be like Dr. Guy. Well, yeah, at one point you and Tara broke into the, your br older brother or the surgeon's office to get that information, which you end up not getting, I won't say what happened just in case anybody hasn't seen it, but with your cell yeah, phone. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I took two. To me, York and Tamara have such great chemistry um, in the in the show, and that that wonderful scene in episode five, I guess, or five, four, yeah, that that they have together. Four, 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 yeah. That's a that that really is the essence of York as a person. That's really that's, and you know, props to York because York is who brought Cecilia came to York with the project to begin with. So York has literally been there from day one and then um, hooked up with us later and yeah. we put the TV series together, but it's all because of York really that we're all sitting here. Oh boy, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. With you. Your work, I'm thrilled. Your work is very good in, in, in this year. Very good. Yeah. I love your work. It is. It, it is very good. I mean, the show is phenomenal. I mean. It's just phenomenal, which I'm, I'm learning the digital series I'm liking more and more every day. Mm -hmm. um, I know Jennifer was in one that I've recently discovered, Anacostia. Um, she won I, the Emmy for that. I won an Emmy for that, and they yes. wouldn't do it to me, which is a very <laughs> long, boring story. <laughs> but, she still, but she still won. I did. But, yes. I won. Yeah. So I'm an Emmy winner. I just don't have my Emmy, but, you know, I'm getting one. A friend of mine sending one of his to me, actually. Oh, good. That's so kind. And he said, You can have one of mine, that for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, but I, here's what I've done I, I broke my shoulder. You can see a scar start. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Hold on now. Oh, no. I broke my shoulder. And not only did I break my shoulder, I had a new shoulder put in. This is like five months ago. But three months ago, I went to the dentist and I said, Peter, I think I had a little carrier. I have a hair. And he said, okay, let's do x-rays. So we did x-rays. And they and he came in and he looked at my x-rays and he went, oh. And he left the room and brought another doctor in. He came <sighs> and went, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought, oh, what are oh, they no. seeing? What are they? I said, what? They said, did you hit your teeth when you fell and you broke your shoulder? I said, no. They said, well, you came down so hard, you cracked all your upper teeth. These are all oh. So we have to saw off all my teeth and mm. do root canals and do posts. Oh. And now, tomorrow I'm getting all my new teeth. Oh, gosh. Your beauty is pain, darling. Uh, yeah, darling. Listen, never th this, this shoulder is an expensive shoulder. Let's <laughs> I was going to say, now the shoulder is not something to mess with. I've been dealing with mine. It doesn't need replaced, but. You know, what happened? The, what happened to your shoulder? The um, tendon, bicep Ooh. tendon, is coming unattached. In my oh shoulder. no, that's excruciating. Doing shots right now. I've got. I'm seeing two doctors that's in the same building, and they're like, one saying, "No, you can't get another shot because it's going to rupture." And the other doctor that's doing the shots, he's like, "We want it to rupture. It's going to hurt for a little bit, but we won't go in and do anything. But if we right. have to go and do surgery, you're going to have physical therapy, all this recovery, all this pain." And I'm like, okay, who do I listen to? <laughs> oh, I get a third opinion because it sounds to me like they're giving you all different information. Yeah. Well, the doctor that's telling me to let it rupture is a doctor. The one that's telling me not to is a physician's assistant. Oh. So well, one overrules the other. Yeah. 
Look how I I, when I broke my wrist, uh, I, when I was doing all my children, and I called, I called the producer and I said, I said, um, listen, I, I just, I'm in the hospital. They're putting a cast on. I broke my shoulder. She said, well, you're going to come in to work tomorrow, aren't you? I said, well, <laughs> yeah. She said, I mean, we'll just have to say you got drunk and broke your wrist. I said, okay. <laughs> so it was an evening gown scene where we all had ball gowns on. And I have this thing on my wrist and I'm in, and I didn't know I tore all the, ten, I tore the whole tendon like you're having. And I kept thinking, I must be a baby because I'm in excruciating pain. I don't know why I'm in excruciating pain. I didn't know the fracture was, the, all the tendons here were broken. And I had this woman assigned to me because I couldn't go to the bathroom because I couldn't hold my evening gown up. So I the apprentice has to come into the bathroom with me. <laughs> you know, it, it was very chic and very elegant, you know. And she's holding up my dress while I'm trying to pee. I mean, it was, it was horrible. The glamour of showbiz. Oh my God. Absolutely. Oh my. And then the night, the day I married David Canary on the show, he had a hundred and four fever, 104. And he was going <laughs> like this. And I said, um, uh, I can't kiss him. They said, no, you have to kiss him. I said, I can't kiss him. My God, did you hear him? I think he has pneumonia. Well, darling, I had to kiss him because we were getting married. And I got the worst flu. I was in bed for two weeks, for two weeks solid. So we all are reinfecting each other also, you know, because you have a love scene with someone who's dying, you know, and then you get it, you know. So it's very, very fun. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, that's a good, I that's a good time to say, you know, we shot this movie literally weeks before COVID hit. Oh, yeah. Um, I a mean, month, like a month before. A month, yeah, mm-hmm. three weeks or something. Yeah, before. And that's part of what happened. You know, the film, unfortunately, just had to sit there because nothing could get done. So I guess in some ways, COVID was good to Kombucha Cure because here we are. We, yeah. got it, we pulled it together. I think it's great. And I'm very anxious to find out what she's going to write for the second season. We all are. She's not telling anybody. So we're all <laughs> in the dark. Well, yes. you don't have to worry about me. I'm I'm not one that I don't like spoilers much. So you know, so I don't usually ask for spoilers unless I know them already. <laughs> right. I do want to ask y'all something because in the in the theme of today, the show today, when I went to the store, I bought me a bottle of kombucha. It's have good. you all ever tried it? Kombucha. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I drink kombucha all the time. Yeah, I love kombucha. Oh, I love uh, it. I just got some recently. Well, I'm not going to knock it because I've only tried one brand and one flavor, but I did not like it. It yeah, got you watermelon. Get it. it's, it's I got watermelon this. and it tastes like cucumber soda. <laughs> I don't like cucumbers and it tastes like cucumber soda. So the watermelon is not for me. You have to find I would probably brand. say there are, yeah, brands are yeah, different too. Brands. And also, I won't say like don't do watermelon, but I have had watermelon kombucha and it is a very specific experience. I can say that. Like, <laughs> thank you. Like, I'm I not crazy. Like <laughs> if you get like orange or, you know what I mean? Like something, they all mostly taste the same, but there's like guava or watermelon that I feel like kind of go off into some deep flavors. I will say the first time I had kombucha, I didn't love it either. Uh, you know, it's this weird thing. It's like the first time you taste coffee, you know, and you're like, oh, what's that? I'll take another sip. And they're like, why do you take another sip? I don't know. And then you can't stop taking sips, as you see me literally right now. Oh, right here. Cup. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> I've got orange juice. Not me. <laughs> I'd be up all night doing your closet and my closet. <laughs> I would drink the coffee at this time. But Tim, but no, there were great, a lot of flavors. There were a lot of flavors. There's a great story about kombucha in this. I, there's a scene in the uh, film, in the series, where Theo's in the hospital having had a procedure and Gabriella comes in and she asks what what is sitting there and we tell her kombucha and she wants to try it well in in real life Denise Boutet who plays Gabriella has had has never tasted kombucha and so I said to her before I think you probably want to do you want to take do you want to try that right no 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 I I think it's better if I don't it's better because you know method I thought "Uh uh-huh okay here we go and so then (laughs) So it was what you see, her reaction that you see in the series probably was the one take we kept, but it was authentically oh, yeah. her, I didn't, her first time ever tasting kombucha. And it 
Yeah, she didn't. I didn't have it. an reaction like that, but that's why I went ahead and decided to go ahead and try it. But I was going to do it on camera. I thought, <laughs> no, I better not. I better not. I don't know how I'm going to react because, you know, I'm a texture person. You know, certain textures to me don't do good. Banana texture, I don't do good with. So, you know, I just kind of, yeah. I got to try this first. I don't want to be on front of everybody. Yeah, it's, a, it's an acquired taste, I guess, right? If you For get sure. Right it is. But Jennifer, I want to ask you about your first job. I was kind of uh, impressed when I read it in entertainment. Um, it was, was singing. Arms in the Man, George Bernard Shaw. Oh, no, I'm talking about your singing Playboy Bunny. Oh, oh the my very God. first Payback. Playboy Club. The very oh, first Playboy being Club. the singing Playboy Bunny. Oh, God, yes. Uh, I sang the sang song because I sang it so dirty and they would throw $100 bills at me. I used to make a lot of money. Um, I sang a very dirty version of Bill Bailey. I was kind of doing Marion Colby. That was my character on All My Children, uh, you know, years before. Um, yeah, and the Playboy Club was, oh, my God. I was telling some of the other day, Right before I went to the Playboy Club, I was working. I had a blonde, you know, beehive hairdo. It was the 60s. Uh, it was around 59, 60. And this man came in with his nose had obviously been broken many times and his cauliflower ears. And he was not a joy to watch or look at. And he came over to play dice. And he says, uh, hey, your nose is large. <laughs> So I said, well, you're no prince yourself. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, you've got a lot of guts coming in here and insulting me at my dice table, you know. He said, you got a lot of guts standing up to me, kid. I like you. So he, he leaves. So the next night he comes in and he says, I hear you like Louis Prima. I said, yes, I do. He said, well, you're off now. I said, no, I'm not. I worked till four and the boss said, you're off now. You're off. So I went, oh, I guess I'm off. He said, yeah. So we leave the club and we get into this limo, big limo. And he says, now listen, kid, you're my broad. I'm gonna get you an apartment, a couple of poodles. I catch you cheating, I'm gonna break both your arms and legs. <laughs> so I started laughing. I thought, this guy's a comedian. You know, I said, he's funny. You know, so I'm being smart ass with this guy. So we get to the club where Louis Prima is and we, the maitre d' knew me and he, he just, all the color drained out of him. And, and he said, ah, oh, hi, you know, and he let us in. I thought, why did he look so strange? So anyway, I'm sitting with this guy and I'm putting him down and we're bantering back and forth. And finally, I went to Lily's room and one of the, I knew the waitress and she said, um, oh my God, what are you doing with him? I said, with who? She said, Big Lou. I said, I'm with Big Lou? She said, yeah, don't you remember? Uh, Art Adler, he was found dead in, in a sewer with every bone in his body broken. I said, yeah, he's Big Lou. He's a hitman for the mob. <laughs> so I left the bathroom like this and I, and I didn't say a word. He said, hey, baby, you, you're shutting up. You were so funny. Why are you so quiet? I said, I think I'm getting sick. And so I went home. I never went back from my, my paycheck. I never went back to that club. And and because he was going to drive me home, my father, my little brother, we'd all be killed and have every bone in our body broken. So two years later, now I'm a Playboy bunny with red hair, with a red behind, whatever I had. And in comes Big Lou. And I went over to Claudia, the other bunny. We were running this room ourselves. And I said, oh, Claudia, there's a man over there and he's going to break every bone in my body. I've got to hide in the bathroom. She said, you'll do anything to get out of work. I said, no, I don't want to get out of work. I just want to hide in the bathroom. He's, he's a kid man for the mob. So I hid in the bathroom for two hours. And oh, wow. he knocked, he said, he's leaving. And I came out, I was scared. I mean, you know, you get in a car and he says, I'll get you an apartment, two poodles, get you cheating. I'm going to break both your arms and legs. And it's real. I thought it was funny. I mean, no, it was reality. So, and then I had a, a, a rent control apartment and a knock on my door and there are two men with guns. You can see the guns in their suit, you know, the jacket. They said, we think it'd be better for your health if you moved. I said, well, I'm very happy here. You won't be for long. So I called the police and I said, listen, I was just threatened by two men and they had guns. And they said, who's your landlord? I said, Di Lorenzo. She, they said, you gotta move lady. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're threatening me, lady. We can't help you. You've got to move. 
So I called this lawyer, Rose Caputo. She's, a, she's Italian and she became a judge. And I thought, I'll get an Italian lawyer. And I said, listen, uh, you know, these people come with guns and they're threatening me. She said, who's your landlord? And I told her, she said, you got to move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to move. You know, here you are wow. in New York City and you have no recourse. No recourse. You either move or they will do something really bad. That's crazy. Oh, well, they oh, no. to break up my door. And so my cats will die in the apartment too. And then they put mice under my door every day so that they were mice flying. I never had mice for 12 years. So anyway, it was quite a story. Wow. Getting back to kombucha cure. Yeah. I, I do think that that Hannah and her character and her and her husband, you know, are, are victims, total victims of yes. the way our society has been running now. And and, and I, the met, the medical mob. It's a mob, but a different kind of mob. It's a different kind of mafia. It's the medical mafia. That's right. Yeah. It's a medical mob. I watched that that um, series on the OxyContin family. The the the. Um, Oh, dope sick or not the Dupont the oh I know their names but oh, I the know. ones who started it. What the one the family that started it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And it was just incredible. They knew it was addictive. Yeah. You know, listen, for my second facelift, I'm you know I'm giving you dirt, right? Okay. <laughs> for my second facelift, my doctor sent me home with. Uh, a, a Philippine nurse, a wonderful nurses, and uh, and she gave me an oxycontin. Okay, and I don't drink and I don't do drugs and and here's how it went. Hi, aren't you glad I'm here? Don't you want another one? I mean, if you take two of us, you'll feel better than one. And I looked at her. I said, "What was that you just gave me?" And she told me, and I said, "I don't want any more." Please throw them out. No, 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 you'll need it. I said, I don't care if I need them. Give me extra strength Tylenol. I don't want any more of this. Now, if one pill can do that to a person, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine why it's epidemic? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't like pain pills. Um, like I said, with my shoulder, I had surgery about a year ago on it for them trying to repair it, taking out some of the bad muscle and stuff. And they gave me a prescription of hydro oxycodone or something like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it. I didn't take any. I did. I did all of my recovery without any pain pills. I think I took a couple of Tylenol, but I was just like, man, I'm not. You could prescribe it, but I'm not going to take it because no, I yeah. don't. It I'll makes me sick. You. Number one and number two, I get all jittery and can't sleep, and I don't like the effects from. Friend of mine had had double mastectomy and and uh, complications, and she was in a lot of pain. And when I had my when I broke my shoulder in four places, they had to put a new one. I have a steel shoulder. I don't have my shoulders gone. They removed it and put a new one in. And she said, the best thing to take is to take three Advil and one extra strength Tylenol. And I've got to tell you, that cocktail will take away the pain for you. Because um, they sent me home with morphine and uh, I, I, they, they gave me morphine before my surgery and I got suicidally depressed. Oh, no. actually suicidally depressed i wanted to jump off a building and i was in pain 24 7 and this drug was pulling me down into into the basement and digging a hole you know it was so you got to be real careful with drugs and what you're taking in because uh they're very dangerous well what helps me most with my pain is prednisone steroid and take one of those i mean it still makes me jittery but it doesn't make me sick and the pain goes it's just gone yeah. Have you tried crystal meth? <laughs> <laughs> no. I have oh, heard that. Of that. I have heard. Well, I've got something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a method actor. So when I play, you know, the addict, I, just, I try a little, just, you know what I mean? Just, to, <laughs> just to, for shits and giggle. Yeah. Well, there's also medical marijuana too. I mean, it's not legal in Kentucky yet, but you're fixing to be passing it just past our oh Senate. My God. So. And, and now all the marijuana addicts are saying, well, it's legal. And I say, how long have you been smoking it? <laughs> and they say, oh, well, since I was 15 and they're like 45. And I go, oh, well, it wasn't legal the whole time you were smoking it, was it? <laughs> I don't get it. 
<laughs> they're going to make everything legal. Well, maybe that's the way to do it. They do it in Holland, and they don't have a lot of problems. No, they don't. Who knows? Well, this is a good time. York, I'm going to plug our next project because we're, we're working on Please. our next series with Cecilia called Desert Laurel, which is basically about the opioid crisis in America. And we're basing this one in Central California because there's parts of Central California that's been totally sort of overlooked with the crisis. And um, yeah, so ironically, that's what's great about for Cecilia. Her next project does kind of stay in line with you know what's happening in in the in the drug culture and yeah. big pharma again, really. Well, make sure you research uh, the gosh, I can't think of what it's called the uh, heroin highway or something like that that runs from Kentucky. It's oh. opioids. It's not heroin, yeah. but it's opioids that runs from Kentucky to Florida. Yeah, back and forth. There's a, one highway yeah. that it's all going through. And so many people are paid off to look the other way. And, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole circuit, basically. Yeah. And I don't understand that because their addiction is no, nothing to laugh about. Uh, I have a daughter who went through addiction. She's clean now, but, you know, it, it's nothing, nothing fun about it. Well, it yeah. affects the whole family, like you said, you know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it does. I mean even when they're not trying to get clean, when they're just using off on their own, it's still affecting the family, breaking down the family. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. But I've got a good family. Um, I was going to ask y'all, because you brought up COVID, how, how y'all did with COVID, because like my family, when it started, we're everywhere. We started doing a weekly Zoom on Sunday, and we still do it three years later. Whoever can get on can get on. How did y'all deal with all of that? Because y'all are in more stricter areas than I am. Mm-hmm. Well, I was kind of lucky. I was out in Palm Springs where I also live. And so it was a little more isolated, you know, not not like the big city. Um, it was, yeah, I just, I just recently stopped wearing a mask pretty much. I think I'll always wear one on a plane now. I mean, I just have my certain things, my own comfort zone. But uh, maybe if I go to hospitals, you know, it's so weird. For so many years, I would go visit people in the hospital. I'd wash my hands. I wouldn't touch anything. And I'd still come back with some sort of flu or something, never thinking that you're getting it through your nose and your mouth. So everything probably, enters through your nose, all disease. Well, uh, when I first met Jennifer, Jennifer years ago was the first one that told me, like, when you fly, put... Um, Antibiotic ointment up your nose and then say in, inside your nostrils to sort of block germs that would get in through. And I kind of was like, what? Really? And that so works. It works. So, anyway. you know, George was coming down with the, I, I had some allergies a bit last week. And George said, I'm getting sinus activity. I said, put the triple antibiotic ointment up in the saline solution. And the next day it was gone. Yeah. I take, I take that everywhere. I mean, I don't go anywhere without that. Well, I think Jennifer was mostly down in Florida during COVID, but York, you were in LA, right? I was in LA. Yeah. Um, and man, you know, LA had some very strict rules. So, you know, it was a hunker down, man. Um, uh, so myself and uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, Amber Steph, who actually plays nurse Jessica, the nurse on the phone. Right. <laughs> yeah. She, that That's our, uh, ex-girlfriend now that's okay um we hunkered down and kind of stayed in my place and we i mean we didn't do it, it ironically we actually very much enjoyed each other's company but for like eight months it was just like the two of us like we would go trips to costco and then other than that we were in this apartment or like on a walk around mm -hmm. the neighborhood like that was like life for like eight months but tim like how what you said that was fun is that my um my mom and my brothers, I have two brothers, uh, one of which is actually in the show. Um, uh, we started doing a Zoom as well. And so we would get together and we would Zoom. I don't remember what, what night, and I cannot say that it has lasted, but <laughs> for the beginning of COVID at least, for like probably like a year, maybe two years, somewhere in there, uh, we would all get on a Zoom and at least catch up um, over Zoom. And actually it felt like it was, um, 
it was really great for all of our relationships because the truth was like, you know, some of us could go longer than that without talking to each other. So we actually started really kind of learning stuff about each other. And it was really cool to see each other like that. Well, I have two younger half brothers and me and my youngest when we didn't communicate a lot until the Zooms and, and he and I have gotten so close now. I mean, we've worked together with things for the farm. We have a family farm that he runs, you know, which is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, there were some good, I mean, obviously people dying is horrible, but it's, there were some positive things that came out of this pandemic, you know, in, in, in many ways people's priorities kind of got in line and Jennifer actually got to be part of a, a series that they did. They shot everyone quarantined in their homes and they filmed, filmed them on zoom. Um, that was really funny. It was a comedy series. Who says sex isn't fun after menopause? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite lines. That's right. Well, yeah. Jennifer, you just got, are you, are you still doing your one woman show? Uh, I know you had one. Well, of I, 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 my, my mentor just sold out and Saturday night performed at Carnegie Hall. She's 95 oh. next month. She is the most amazing singer, most amazing singer. So I'm doing, I've got my act is like 90% there now. And I'm supposed to be writing, which I'm not. I've written part of it of a one woman show because my career has been such a disaster that, that um, like I won the Emmy and didn't get it. That's kind of like my career has been for the whole time. And so um, I've been writing short little vignettes of my disastrous career, working with Mickey Rooney and I go down the line. And he thought he was being edited because he was in a film, he was on stage. So it was quite a time. <laughs> So anyway, so I've been doing that because people think the stories are hysterical. It starts with, here's how it starts. The lights are go down and you hear a car screech to a halt. The door opens and you hear a woman screaming, Mr. Bassey, your daughter's not a virgin anymore. Oh, it's no. three in the morning and all the lights on the block go on. And then she said, Mr. Massey, your daughter's got a virgin. I mean, screaming. And it was before air conditioners. So the entire, you know, block knew about it. And she said, I've kidnapped her dog. If she doesn't stop sleeping my husband, I'm going to kill her dog. This is all going on. You know, she did kidnap my dog. And so, yeah, my father and the neighbors were a little appalled and shocked. But um, so that's how my dad found out what I've been up to. So, uh, yeah. My whole little, jo little Joan. Little Joan. Her name was Joan. Yeah, I got into a I got into a lot of trouble. But anyway, um, well, and, and by the way, your disastrous career we we would all kill for. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, playing playing I know. A character that I got to play. I mean, yeah. and work with David. You don't know who David Canary is, do you? I just know him from the show, and he's phenomenal. You know I love him. But I'm loved saying, him. Okay, David was on Gunsmoke in the '60s, and, and David was, you know, and he was kind of becoming a name, and and he decided he wanted a a job that could put his family through school and college. So he opted for All My Children, and he and they offered him twins, which of course you, you win Emmy after Emmy. You play twins, you win Emmy after Emmy, and so first of all. He was a brilliant actor, just brilliant. And second of all, he was as close to an angel as you can get. He was the kindest, sweetest man you'd ever want to work with and funny. And so, I mean, it was a gift, you know, you know, here I am marrying his twin. I mean, I've never had more fun. So, you know, you get paid to have fun and you slip in and out of this character over a 40 year period. You know, you're gone 10 years. They call you up and say, we're bringing you back if you want to come back, you know, and then it's like going home and every, you know everybody and you, you've worked with everybody. And so it's like, yeah. So it's it's just that part of the career has been a hoot, just a hoot. I, I, I'm very grateful to have had that whole time with my, in my life, absolutely. When did you have time to watch All My Children? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm Your 51. Mom. I'm not Your young. Mom. Your mom watched it. <laughs> um, actually, my aunt watched it. My mom watched the 
ABC wins, I think it was, Cutting Light. Uh, as, the world turns. as the world turns, right, right, uh, capital, all of those, right, right. Uh, but my aunt got me into all my children, one life to live, and Erica. That's, those, back. Oh God, is she good, Erica? Slater. Those two with Guiding Light are my three top soaps. Well, um, here's here's how things used to go with me. A close friend of mine would call me up and say, "I want to watch you and all my children." I said, "Please don't." Why? You'll get hooked. Oh, no, I won't. I said, honey, honey, it's a soap opera. I'm telling you, you're going to get hooked. No, I won't. So she calls me. She, she, I give her the date I'm airing. So she calls me up and she said, oh, my God, you were wonderful. But is the baby going to die? <laughs> and, you know, she got hooked for 20 years. She watched that show. I mean, you can't stand it. You know, well, it's cliffhanger every day. No joke, uh, soaps is why I in, made my parents get me a VCR. It, it was the only thing I ever recorded was soaps. Yeah. yeah. And for those kids watching, go ahead, Google VCR. <laughs> <And> you'll, find <laughs> out, <laughs> you'll find out what Oops. Tim is talking about. I just showed my age. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, okay. No, I'm not ashamed of my age. It's what I tell people all the time. My age doesn't make me feel old. It's my children's age that make me feel old. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, my youngest is going to be 33 this year, so. Wow. Well, I've kept you long enough. I'm not going to keep you anymore. I hope you all come back. Uh, even individually, I'd love to do a profile show on each one of you. Even before this, I've sent requests. I think I did Jasper and Jennifer for sure. <laughs> But I want you all back, and especially to talk about this new show that you are working on when it gets closer. It sounds phenomenal. That'd yeah, be great. That'd just, be great. We'd love it. Thank I you. I want Absolutely. to tell everyone that um, tonight's the season um, season finale. But then in two weeks, we're going to be going to Amazon Prime and YouTube to start with, and some more platforms will roll out. And keep an eye out for season two coming uh probably shooting this summer yeah uh i was gonna tell everybody to remember to catch season one on of kombucha Cur on pop star right now i mean season six tonight will top off season one and i think it's supposed to begin in the spring you are supposed to start production on season two which yeah I'm we're sort hurt. of pet, we're sort of in pre-production now but hopefully we we want to shoot around june well y'all have me totally hooked i'm not gonna lie um it's kind of like the Bay. It got me hooked. Though those are my two favorite digital shows now. Speaking it's, of the Bay, I want to give props to our co-producer J.R. Rosenberg, who really York and he and I, along with Michael Snell and Cecilia, really, you know, we could have done a documentary on how this was put together, long distance <laughs> Zoom meetings across the ocean, all that. So he he's a big part of all this. He's very it's, shy and humble and doesn't like credit for anything but but he's great. I'm one of those people. thank you jr right and i'm one of those people that would love that documentary because it's kind of what i'm doing here i'm not getting so many people behind the camera they're just like you said are a little more shy and reserved they don't like being in front of the camera as much but gregory j barton great great director i'm waiting yeah. to get wendy i want to i definitely want to get um cecilia I really yeah. want her on here too. Uh, I was originally going to have her on, but I don't know. I think scheduling got messed up. But I'm going to try again. Don't think well, I'm you know, not. she has that little day job. Yeah, know, being a doctor. A <laughs> <laughs> and look at where she lives too. I mean, kind of hard to, yeah, on an ugly it's, island, a really ugly island. It's a tough really ugly island. island. Yeah. What a horrible, what a horrible. <laughs> she's a she's a doctor, and she's writing like season two of Kombucha Cure, and writing desert laurels as well so like she's she she stays busy man that one she's oh, such an underachiever really by I the mean, way she lives in maui everybody yeah <laughs> beautiful place i'd love to go someday uh but thank you all uh if y'all will hang out thank the, you tim in the waiting room for just a couple of minutes i'll be right back there okay thank you guys thank you thank all you so awesome. much. thank you tim I want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, I want to thank the Necrotizing Fasciitis Foundation for sponsoring our show. Um, 
I hope you'll subscribe to our channel for more upcoming shows. Remember, you can catch uh, Kombucha Cure on Popstar right now. I highly recommend it. For more information on necrotizing fasciitis, please visit www.necfasci.org. Please remember to always be kind to one another. Have a great day.